Hey all, my name is Kurt. This is Trent. Welcome back to SLB Basement Bourbon Bar in Trenton. I hope you have your fancy pants on tonight. I got my, I got my Marshall sweatpants on. That's about <laughs> all I can give you. Bro, I, I told you we're going to be drinking some Bardstown Chateau de Libard. I didn't think you meant the big dog here. <laughs> oh yeah, we're going to do it. What I have out here for you tonight on the bar top, I've got I've got the first release of the Bardstown Chateau de Libard a couple years ago, right? May of 2020, yep. Yeah, and I was fortunate to get two bottles. So, two? Mm-hmm. Man. Yeah. So, this is the end, though. You've been milking it. Well, this is the end of the second oh, one. Oh, no. I know. And I have to say, Trenton, and, and you know this already, but I, I really have to think hard about my top sips ever. But just off the cuff, I'd have to say this is probably in my top five of best sips of bourbon ever. Really? <clears throat> yeah, That's I mean, saying a lot. I mean, you know, I, I'd have to really sit down and pencil it out, but I, I can't see how it couldn't be in my top five. I'm excited I, to try. I really, really loved this first release of the Chateau Daily Bob. Now, as everybody has heard, the second release has come out now, too. Uh, so there's a little bit of differences there, though. There's some differences in the bourbon. There's some differences in the finish process. So we're gonna we're gonna sip some and see what we think of each one. All right. But before we do, Trenton said he had some news to share. So last night, uh, I was a little bit bored, and I shaved my beard and only left the mustache. So let me know what you think. <laughs> Trying something new. Michelle, Michelle, my girlfriend thinks I look dumb, but. Let me know what you guys think. And, and that's what you want to, you know, yeah. before we started filming. Very important. <laughs> Very important note there. Before we started filming, he says, yeah, before we get into it, let me, I got a couple things to say real quick. Very important. And that's what you had to say. Yeah. Wow. Did you notice he even had like a beard thing going on, honey? I, I didn't. I was, I was busy yeah. making dinner and. Well. I'm going to start putting cream in it and doing a little handlebar situation and it's going to look good. About a year or two later, let me know how that looks. Well, this took like a month to grow, so I it's know, going to take I a while. Know, I know. But I think people came here for the bourbon, not this pathetic excuse of a mustache. So. <laughs> I think it's pretty good, dude. You know, in about a month, you got something good going on there. I, we'll see. <laughs> if if the people in the comments think I should keep it up, we'll, we'll keep it going for... Right. It's almost no shave November, too, so I might... <laughs> I can't handle it. You know me. I've every, never seen every, you every month to shave for me because I'd be itching my face off. I just well, that's can't. why I itch so I much on the it. video. I can't do beard. Anyways, let's get into this. Trenton, the original Chateau de Libard, all right, it is a 12-year MGP bourbon. Okay. All right? Finished 18 months in Armagnac barrels. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. So it's 118.4 proof, and it, back in that day, it cost me about 120 bucks. Really? Yeah. I've seen this go for about, because I was, I was looking into it after um, the Batch 2 came out. And I saw this for about fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. Get out of here, give or take. Seriously. And when this first came out, oh my god, so good. I had just kind of started the whole bourbon thing, mm -hmm. and I went into a liquor store, and the guy came up to me. He's like, "Hey, we just got this in off the truck today. Do you want one?" And I was like, "Nah." <laughs> you did? I did. Boy, I'd slap you today I for know. that. But I didn't know either. Yeah. Luckily, Mike got it twice, so really? I was get I was able to get a second bottle. Nice. But like I said, that, that's the end of the second. And this sat on the shelf for quite a while. I know. Man. I know. I know. The nose, Trenton, is just jammy as it can be. It is. It's just fruit jammy, fig jammy. Wonderful. You can taste that before it even mm. hits your tongue. Mm -hmm. It's like the the vapor or whatever is coming off this. As soon as it gets close to your mouth, it just kind of like zips zip down zips down the the tongue. That's wild. Now, just listen for a second. This might sound a little different, but in some finished bourbons, to me, it gets a little wanky. Mm -hmm. The finished process overrides the depth and the goodness of the bourbon. Yeah, you get where I'm coming from. Yeah. If I've ever tasted a perfect finished bourbon, it's this one. I can agree with but that. But you still get that Kentucky hug. Yeah. And I say that even though I know it's a 12-year MGP bourbon, but it's still you get that you get that nice 
bourbon hug as you sip it. Yeah. And then the finish process takes in with the with the flavor notes. Just absolutely outstanding. I have never had a finished whiskey or a finished mm. bourbon quite like this before. Because mm. you're right, some of them like, especially now that people are doing um, like honey barrel finishes mm -hmm. and stuff that it it, right. it's almost, it almost overpowers the bourbon to the point some. where you only some. taste whatever finish it yes, is. Yes, correct. And that to me is where I draw the line. Do I like or do I don't like? If a finished process, you know, stands brighter in the glass than the bourbon itself, then, then that's too much for me. Yeah. But this one here, Trent, it's got all the good stuff in it. It does. I mean, to me, I get just a little bit of citrus, just a pop right up front. But I want to know, I mean, I got like a big apricot thing going right after that. And then it dives into cinnamon and chocolate and things of that nature for me. I just get a ton of fruit like a berry mm -hmm. I don't get I don't get maybe a little apricot I don't get much cinnamon or anything but I do get like a lot of I'm talking about like right, right out the back I get a, I get a hit a hit of citrus right on the front palate in the mid palate I'm getting that fruit note to me it's like apricot possibly peach but berry you know you're coming in same it's jammy yeah you know what I mean but uh, towards the back end of the palate and into the finish I'm getting like a chocolate maybe an espresso note Something like I that. I could see like a coffee note mm. sort of thing going mm. on. It That's could be really that. good. All right, you think batch two? Have you have you had this? You tried it a little bit. Mm -hmm. I haven't, so I'm interested to see if this Just a touch. remotely stacks up. I've heard. I'm curious. I've heard that this isn't quite as good as batch one, mm -hmm. but we'll yeah, see. We'll see. What's I'm the curious deal? what you got to say. All right, this one's a little bit different, Trenton. So this one has a 12-year Kentucky bourbon. This is a blend. Okay. So the first one was a 12-year Indiana bourbon, MGP. This one is a blend of 12-year Kentucky bourbon and 10-year Tennessee bourbon. Probably Dickel. Probably Dickel. Now, the, the ratio really wasn't put out there, mm -hmm. but from my research, I found 66% Kentucky bourbon, the remainder being the 10-year Tennessee bourbon. Now. Take that as it is. You know, that might not be exact. However, this one also is different on the finish. Oh. It was, it was finished from 16 to 24 months. Certain barrels were finished longer than others. Interesting. And I don't know if they did that with tasting process. You know, they went yeah. through and tasted them, and when they thought they were good, they pulled them. But some barrels were eight, uh, finished for 16 months, and some barrels were finished up to 24 months. That's weird. Of the same Armagnac barrel, so as the first release. I got a weird note here. I don't know if it's the dickle that I'm getting or what. I get like a like a sour pickle. <laughs> For real. Hey, sour. Well, we've moved on from candy to sour pickle. And like a, maybe a little like a chocolate or something. Well, there. I have to say that the nose isn't nearly as no. jammy as the first one. Not even close. But it is decent. Yeah. Uh, I can pick up a little bit. I don't know if I'd call it sour, sour pickle. pickle. No. But hey, I, I mean. Where's Fred May? I see. <laughs> Fred, what's the nose on this? It's definitely like a, I wouldn't say Flintstone vitamin, but. No, I, I wouldn't go that far with it at all. It's, it's muted. It's definitely more muted and seems a little bit more brighter than this is deeper and jammy. What's the proof? 107, okay. I was going to say, it drinks a lot less. It's a nice proof point, and it carries the flavor nicely, but... It's 107 proof. Here's the kicker. This one's getting... This one's about 170 bucks, too. Okay. So... so that's a tough one. It's it not is. even... To me, it doesn't even... Like, it doesn't even compare at all. Mm-hmm. Like there's real, I don't get many notes from this that I got from this, and it's it's. I do get the only one I get honestly is a little bit of apricot or peach. Now it isn't in the sweet and lovely way that mm -hmm. I get it in here, but I still get it. It is a little spicy. Um, yeah, I get that. I, I might. I think I do get some fig or some kind of raisin. I can. Yeah. I towards the end of that, I do. I do get that. But, and, and let's face it, Trent, let, 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 no batch one and batch two are going to be exactly the same. Right. Of the same finish. 
you know, no movie part one and part two are going to be just as good. Yeah. Impossible, right? So same thing with this here. I didn't buy this expecting it to be as good or better than this one. I had high hopes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was did. hoping it was going to be really good, but to me, this was like, oh, type thing. Yeah. You know, and, and you get that. I, I really didn't expect that with this one, and it isn't, but let's discuss it. How close does it get? Uh, I can't even really put into words what I'm like. To me, this is not even close to that at all. Mm -hmm. And it, it is a bit of a, a bit of a disappointment for me because I mean you were able to pick up one. I should have picked one mm -hmm. up. But if I didn't have if like let's say you were all out of this and you were you were talking it up and I had this, right. there's no way you could describe to me how they were different. Mm -hmm. it, this is just it's good. Don't get me wrong. I would buy this and drink it, hundred percent. But it's not ended up in my top five or my top ten or even my top twenty pours that I've ever had. No, no, we won't even put that in consideration. You know, for our our end of the year best of. Yeah, I at all. Mm -mm. It won't even be, be in consideration. Here's where I'm at, and see if you think, see if you agree or disagree. I think this one suffers a little bit in the finish process, but I say that in quotations because no two are going to be alike. But I really think the downfall on this one is the addition of the Tennessee bourbon because for me, yeah. in the mid palate to the back, I can sense that dickle in there. Yeah. Now, I don't really get it as a minerality way, but more in a, in a way more fruity and almost fake fruity way. Yeah. I hate to say that because I don't want to mean it in a bad way, because in reality this is not a bad pour. No, it's not, it's not a bad pour. Uh, we're we're comparing the two. So this one is true blue, wonderful pour. I mean, without wow. question, deep, rich, dark, jammy. You know, a little bit of that apricot tone in there too. This one here, you get a little spice up front. I do get some of that apricot, but after that, boy, I really, I, I sense a lot of that dickle. That dickle <laughs> and that kind of uh, artificial type fruit notes in there for me. And to me, I think the <clears throat> the proof point is a, is lacking a little bit. It almost drinks more like a 90 proof. And, and then, if I wanna, if I wanna drink maybe half the bottle, mm -hmm. that's great, but I think it's, with it being lower proof, it also loses yeah. the the flavor a little bit. You know, it's 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 what eight or nine. Ten. Point, this is one sixteen or one eighteen. Yeah, it's a hundred eighteen point four. So yeah, ten. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, so, so you can you can definitely tell the difference mm -hmm. more than I would expect. Yeah, but maybe it's because we started with this and right. we didn't start with this. But, that could be too. But tasting side by side, you get a true realistic yeah opinion. I mean, let's face it. Now, here's the big kicker. All right, we got to kind of bring this to an end, but 170 bucks. It's at least 160 to 170 bucks. I'm not a hard no, but I'm also not a hard yes. I'm mm -hmm. kind of in between. Yeah. Um, if I'm going to the store and I'm looking for something new, if I don't have the batch one and I'm looking to, because Bardstown does a lot of different finishes, mm -hmm. and I haven't really been disappointed with any of their finishes. Not much, no. So. If this was on the shelf and I had heard some stuff about it and I wanted to see kind of what my thoughts were on it, mm -hmm. I'd probably pick it up. But mm -hmm. 170 bucks on something that doesn't blow you away, that's kind of a tough pill to swallow, I think. Yeah, yeah well, well, here's my thought on it, Trenton. Um, I think in general, Bardstown does a great job with a lot of their products. Oh, yeah. You know, the Discovery Series especially and, and a lot of different things, okay? This was just outstanding. Like I said probably even one of my top five of all time sips. However, price is creeping up. I think 170 is ridiculous for that bottle. Yeah. <laughs> That's just to, my I opinion. I'm sorry. But uh, to me, I, I'm, I'm kind of glad I got this bottle just for the sake of doing this video with you yeah. so we can compare the two. But I would absolutely not buy another one. If, you if know, not in a million yeah. years. I think it's a good pour, but that's an $80 pour, bro. Yeah, it's I'm not just, I'm just saying, and I, you know, I'm just trying to be honest with everybody out there. I'm a little disappointed at, of how prices have increased here, and I know prices have increased in everything, so let's keep that in mind. However, 
Bardstown especially, their prices have jumped quite a bit. Yeah, I think this Discovery Series used to be like one, 109, I think, and I ended up picking one up for like 139 or 149 or something. Say 140. So it's, 140. Not, it's not just like a five ten dollar no, increase. We're talking it's bumping pretty heavy. Forty dollar increase for stuff. Yeah, and I don't know. I just, what did you pay for this? One twenty back in the day. So fifty bucks for something that's mm -hmm. fifty bucks extra more than the first batch for something yeah, that's it, just it's just too much money. Yeah. It's just too much money, unfortunately. So boom. <laughs> <laughs> one of the best I've ever had, but that's that. This one, it's okay. Um, some decent notes in there. It's a decent pour. It's something you can sit down and spend a little bit of time with, but way overpriced in my opinion. So yeah, and that's some, what I think. Something that I'll, I'll always recommend is you see something on a show and you're like, I would never pay $170 for something. Or if you're contemplating, see if they have it at a bar near yeah. you or anything, just so you have an idea of what you might be might be spending money on. Because mm -hmm. $170 is a lot to spend on. Yeah, a liquid. Yes, so, it is. <laughs> So keep yes, that in does. mind. Uh, don't go rushing to a liquor store and, and buying it just because we say it's good. Yep. Try it out. Yep. See if your friends have it. See if a bar has it. Yeah. But Good point. Yep. All right. Anything else you got? Good luck. <laughs> I think the stash conversation was the, the highlight of the evening. I think so. I think yeah. so, too. Yep. Hey, that's all we got for you tonight. Let us know what you think of Trenton Stash. Yes. I don't know. You might have something going on there. As always, we ask you to please drink responsibly. Hey, see you next time right down here with the both of us in the good old basement bourbon bar. See you later.